Have you ever heard about cancer? I'm sure we all know how serious cancer is by hearing its name. We often see cancer occurs in adults or more commonly in old people. But have you ever wondered if cancer, or specifically tumor, grows in a fetus? This might raise questions like, how can tumors grow in cells as small as a fruit? How dangerous is it? Can it be removed? Well, if you want to find out the answer, stay tuned. Without further ado, let's talk about the basics of tumor. So, what is actually tumor? Tumor exists when the cells in our body divide uncontrollably. This happens because these abnormal cells will ignore signals that force them to die, in a process called apoptosis. Depending on its severity, there are two types of tumors, benign and malignant. Benign tumors are not cancerous as they do not spread to nearby tissues. However, malignant tumors are cancerous as they can affect other tissues. For this fetus case, the sacrococcygeal teratoma is mostly a benign tumor, although in rare cases, it can be cancerous. Let's take a closer look at sacrococcygeal teratoma, or shortened as SCT, which is a rare tumor that develops in the spine of a newborn infant, specifically at the base of the tailbone, or outside the pelvis. SCT is the most common neoplasm in newborn, although it is still found to be rare with the prevalence of only 1 in 35,000 live births, in which up to 80% of the cases happens in female, whereas the rest happens in males. SCT was believed to have originated from the Hansen's node, a rounded part at the end of the primitive streak. At the beginning of the third embryonic week, the primitive streak will be formed, which is a longitudinal part of the ectodermal cells that are made up of totipotent cells, which are able to form any type of cell, namely the notochord. The primitive streak is supposed to regress at the end of the fourth week, but the problem comes if the totipotent cells of the primitive streak still remain there, as these cells will form the tumors that we now call sacrococcygeal teratoma. SCT is categorized into four types according to their location and severity. The type 1 tumors are located externally and are attached to the tailbone. Type 2 tumors are found both in the internal and external parts of the body. Type 3 tumors are different from the two previously described tumors as they can be seen from the outside, but actually most of the tumors are located inside the child's abdomen. The last type, the most serious tumor, the type 4 tumor, can't be seen from the outside as it is inside the body at the tailbone level. In minor cases, SCT is asymptomatic due to the small size of tumor and can be removed surgically after birth. However, in most cases of type 1, 2, and 3, a large tumor can be visibly seen projecting from the sacral region. Routine prenatal ultrasound can also detect a large mass. Now, the real question is, how will this large tumor endanger the mother and fetus's life? These large tumors require a large amount of blood supply for their nutrition. So, the fetus's heart has to pump blood quickly for a very high blood flow, which may result in heart failure due to fluid accumulation known as high drops. SCT can also cause the amniotic fluid, fluid that surrounds and gives nutrients to the fetus to accumulate more than the normal amount, which results in infection and gastrointestinal disorder. Polyhydramnios may also trigger preterm labor where the mother can have a life-threatening hemorrhage. The treatment depends on the severity of the diagnosis. After being diagnosed, they must undergo an assessment or staging to determine treatment options. The treatment for SAT always involves surgical removal. The surgery starts by making an incision on the buttocks to separate the tumor from other tissue. But an additional incision on the abdomen is needed for type 3 and 4 tumors. The coccyx bone is also removed together with the tumor. For cancerous tumors, chemotherapy and radiation are required. Wow, you learn something new every day, don't you? Now, by learning about sacrococcygeal teratoma, we know for sure that abnormalities can happen as early as a fetus. Therefore, parents who are expecting a baby should do their best in taking care of their fetus's health and do a routine checkup by doing prenatal ultrasounds. That's it from us today. See you on another episode.